just the phone here. A little better. How is everybody today? Wait for some people to come on here. Get some chat going, maybe. Talk a few things. Show you a few things. Some stuff that we picked up uh, over the week. Some stuff that we'll be using in a, in a future build. Tools-wise, anyways. I hope the video's coming through okay for you guys. It leaves, seems a little shaky and delayed on my end. Hey, John, how you doing? Hopefully it's not choppy or broken up or anything. My, uh, not my Wi-Fi. Okay. You checking. Do a few things here. Talk a couple of things. Tell you guys some updates on the channel. Um, some stuff we've changed race-wise and uh, some other stuff. We've got five people on, so little choppy, not too bad. Okay. It could be my... Well, I'm not far. The Our internet... Wi-Fi is just above my head a little bit, so it shouldn't be too bad. I am in the basement, though, so that might be a little bit of a... Hey, Troy, Tom from... T Ted, hey, Ted, from Michigan. How's the weather up there in old Michigan? I'm going to check a couple things here on the Internet. I'm hoping that... uh. I can get in contact with Jim. For some reason, I, I messaged him a while back, and I didn't get a response, so hopefully cold, yeah. It's a little chilly here today. It's sunny, but a little chilly up here in the Pacific Northwest. So, hopefully we may get getting some snow soon. We've got snow in the higher elevation. Hey, Don, what's going on? Need to give you a call and talk to you. I haven't talked to you in a while. Now check here and see if Jim has updated the points standings yet from our last from race three of the Central Washington Championship Series. We got race four tomorrow. That's one of the things we've moved the race days from Saturday to Sundays. We put it on Saturday so Kyle could make it. And he's got a lot going on in his life. Like we said, that's why we had to move the, the last race here. And uh, um, we had to do some rearranging and whatnot. And it was better for everybody to be running on Sundays than it is Saturdays. So um, it, it'll push the race videos back a little bit. But I think it'll be better for everybody to have it on Sundays. Uh, we're starting practice at noon and racing at 3. Hopefully be done by 6, 7. And then Monday, when I get home from work, I can start editing videos and whatnot and all that good stuff. Um, back on that subject as well, I did we did raise enough to buy one new GoPro. And I have ordered it. It's not here yet, but uh, mail hasn't come yet today either. Um, it said that it was going to be delivered on Monday, on the, 20, on the 24th, which I think is Tuesday. But um, I was hoping it might be here today or yesterday. It didn't show up yesterday, so hopefully it'll be here today. So we can do uh, some more better race coverage for you guys. Um, still raising to buy enough money to buy a third. So uh, we're at $12 left from buying this one. Um, and uh, we're won about $32 total to buy another one. So if you guys want to donate to that, just do it through PayPal. That's how I've been raising the money for it. I want to thank the two gentlemen who uh, donated enough to buy the first one. Um, I'll look on my GoPro here in a minute. No, he still hasn't updated the points yet. Dang it. What's going on with Jim, with the... I have to see if I can get a hold of Jim and see if he's okay. Um, so uh, just go to S-N-T-O-Z-M-A-N at gmail.com on PayPal. And you guys can donate whatever you want to donate and all that kind of stuff. And we'll be able to buy a third one. Um, this, we bought, I want three so we can do an up high like I usually do. Something right down on the racetrack, and then I want one permanently looking at the computer screen. And uh, once we have all three, I'm going to start uploading the race action by heat, rather than the whole, you know, by rather than by um, 
rather than putting all the heats together, I'll upload heat one, heat two, heat three, heat four, heat five, heat six, whichever way, you know, how many people we have. We usually we're right around nine to ten heats. Um, I'll upload them that way, and that way all I have to do is uh, upload three three takes from each of the three GoPros to the to the editing software, and then I can watch all three um, videos all together, find out where I want to make my cuts and stuff, and I can give you guys a really good video of an up high, down low. Maybe we'll catch some race crashes or stuff down low, and I'll look at the computer screen, and we'll look at the computer screen at the start of the heat, um, and uh, we'll take like a glimpse, maybe halfway through, uh, halfway through the heat, with, and then we'll uh, we'll get a glimpse with like a minute to go with the heat, and then I'll show you the end, the last screen at the end of the heat, and then I'll put an intro and outro at the top and the end of the video, and we'll upload them that way, and it'll be they'll roughly work out to about three to four minute videos, and you guys can watch whichever heats you want to watch, whether you want to watch the first heat, the last heat, the middle heat, whatever, and I'll try when I upload them, I'll try and um, at the end when I we put the little windows for videos at the end, I'll make sure we put. So heat one, and then I'll hopefully we can put heat two, and then you guys can just click through the heats through the video with have to go back to the main screen to see the next one. So, and they'll also be all. Um, I might just start. Um, I'd have to create a playlist for each one of them, which might hurt a little bit, but I think we'll uh, we'll make a. They'll be also in a playlist, and you guys can just run through the playlist and find it that way through racing and and then through uh, the central. Uh, Washington Central Washington Championship Series playlist as well. So hopefully that'll work out and everything will work out really good. And it'll make for better race action videos for you guys. Because I've had a lot of people that when I was right down on the racetrack, they, they wanted to see the whole track. When I'm up high, they want down low. People want to see the computer screen and all that kind of stuff. And to do all that, I need three separate GoPros to be able to, to uh, do all of that. So hopefully we'll be able to endeavor to buy the third one. Um, I don't know. It might be here today. Um, I'll let I'll post in the comments or in the in the uh, community page on the YouTube channel whether it shows up today or not. Um, if not, then we'll be watching tomorrow's uh, race with just one GoPro as usual. The next race at Stan's house on the fifth, we'll have at least two, hopefully maybe three, to be able to do that race. So definitely there'll be that'll be um, really cool, and we'll be able to do that. So. Um, just to let you know, too, uh, after the, the that race on the 5th, I'm going to take time off between the 5th and the 1st of the year, like I usually do through the month of December for Christmas time, to be able to hang out with family and, and all that kind of stuff. So we'll be taking our usual December break on the YouTube channel here soon. Um, we have the race this weekend. We'll be doing a video next weekend. And um, not quite sure what we're going to be doing next week. I'm hoping maybe... I don't think we'll get the parts by then, though. Um, but we're going to be doing a fray build here soon. Um, should be getting some money from YouTube uh, within the next... Oops, that's the wrong one. Oh, well, we'll log into this and we'll show you, tell you guys who uh, who donated. Um, so we'll uh, be getting some parts and pieces. I need chassis. Uh, we need running gear. I have the armatures. I have the rear axles. I have the gears. The, I have the, the pinion gear. Um, but we need all the, the top gears for the motor plate. We need chassis and, um, we need, uh, motor magnets and whatnot. So we're going to be ordering all of that here soon to, uh, get parts to start a fray build for you guys. So we can run through, um, how to build and, um, all that kind of stuff. So I want to thank back to the uh, subject of, um, the GoPros. I want to thank Robert. Calmera and uh, Morha Bearquiver. Bar Bear Quiver. Can't can't right pronounce. That. I want to thank those two for donating for the GoPros. Thank you guys very much. It helped out a lot. We were able to buy one. We're at twelve dollars and fifty two cents. We need about thirty two dollars total to buy a second one. So we're about twenty dollars short. So if you guys want to donate, feel free to. So. Um, let's take a look at, I wanted to take a look at where we are sitting. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Where we're sitting uh, that wise, and I'll let you guys know, hopefully soon. I have I have money in my wallet for parts, but I need a little more. And uh, we have 140 coming from YouTube, so once that gets into the account, we can, um, we can, uh, 
we can um, get those parts ordered and whatnot. Um, just to let you guys know, we're going to be ordering chassis. They're not quite uh, free legal yet. I talked to RC uh, this past week, as a matter of fact, whether the new WizJet chassis are free legal. They are not as of yet. But I guess um, uh, there's two people that comment that community that part of the fray. Um, it, it Rick Phyllis, who's the founder, and one other guy who also founded it. They um, uh, commentate on what's legal and what's not legal for the fray. They haven't got together yet, and I got a funny feeling that maybe the pandemic has something to do with that. But I'm hoping by 2022, the WizJet chassis, which is mimicked right off of the T-Jet chassis, will be fray legal. So we're going to be building these cars with uh, WizJet chassis from RC Lincoln and Wizard. Uh, we'll be ordering running gears for our, from RTHO. Uh, we'll be ordering new front ends from RTHO. Uh, what else was I going to get? There's something else I was going to get from them. Oh, hold on. I got a list right here. Let me, let me look up my list. I have a list of parts that will be order in here if i can find where i put that list oh here we go uh so uh gear sets from rtho front end from rtho the bottom gear on the bottom of the gear plate from rtho and then uh gear shaft clusters from rtho and then we'll be ordering we're going to be ordering between me and eliza we're going to be ordering you can buy uh killer b magnets from dash uh five sets at a time for 32.95 we're going to be ordering uh 15 sets of magnets from him. Hopefully we'll be getting some good ones. We'll show you guys how we, we're going to match them up and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to be ordering. When we get everything in, because I do already have some parts already. I already have the I already have the armatures. I got those from RC at the fray this, this uh, past time we were at the fray. Um, and I've got, uh, I've got uh, the rear gears. I got rear axles. So I've got some of the stuff right now. I've got motor brushes and I got all that kind of stuff. But we need some, some essential parts to uh, do the build. When we get everything together, I'll go over everything with you guys. What we have, where I got it, the part number, and um, all of that stuff for, with you guys when uh, everything comes in. Who sells pinning tools? Um, I know uh, Steel Engineering does. I have one right here. This came from, we'll be talking about this stuff here pretty soon. Um, I believe RTHO also has one. I'll hold this still if you guys can see. I know it's backwards because uh, of the camera. Uh, but this is a T TGT-7 uh, chassis axle hole pinner. This is from Scale Engineering. So www.scaleengineering.com. You can get one of them there. Um, if you guys can't remember that, uh, it, uh, and you're on slotcarcrazy.com, um, their, uh, their website is listed there as well. And I believe RTHO has one as well. I'm not sure if he has any in. Um, let me, that's, uh, ooh, RTHO's home right here. So, uh, let's check here. Let's go tools. Uh, gear press. That's. Wheel puller. Uh, tech block. Oh, it doesn't look like he has it. So, uh, um, I believe Wizard may have some as well. Hey, out there. Uh, but, uh, right, Scale Engineering does have them listed on his website. And uh, the, the number you need is TGT-7 is his chassis hole pinner. So, just check that out. And that's where you can find one. Thanks for uh, thanks. I watch. Yeah, RC's got a very good video on his wizard. I just subscribed to his channel as well. I haven't watched any of the videos yet. I want to go over those with you, with uh, go through them and watch them. Kind of, I know how to use a lot of things, but I also want to be able to um, educate myself as well, so I can educate you guys as well too. But RC's got a great channel here on YouTube. Uh, it's a wizard high performance wizard. Gap High Gap Performance, if you guys want to check out his YouTube channel as well. So go check it out there. He did show, he does have a video there of how to use it. Um, I, I got a rough idea how to use one. I'm going to watch that video as well and see how to use it. And then I can show you guys when we actually do the fray build <coughs> how to use it. So um, some other stuff. I want to, thumbnail is sweet. <laughs> Thank you. 
It'll probably change, but that's one of the 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 uh, stage I built on the layout. Um, dang it, what's going on upstairs? Um, what what was I saying? Oh, some of the other stuff. I want to thank um Charles, or we know him as Chain Drive. Uh, he sent us a ton of stuff uh, about a week ago for doing uh, builds and whatnot, fray builds, all that good kind of stuff. Sent us, and this all came from uh, Scale Scale Electric, so you guys or Scale Engineering, so you guys can find these there. Um, we got a uh, tr uh, pickup shoe height gauge, very very nice. Uh, ranges from 110, uh, 0.010 to 0.016, I believe. Yep. So, very cool there. Um, sent us a setup block, two-sided setup block. Hello, Kevin from South Dakota. From Scale Engineering. Two-sided, you got this side, it's got the slots in it. So, if you're using a chassis that has shoes on it, and then it's got a flat side on the other side for you don't have, if you don't have shoes... I've been using the back of my tech block because the back of my tech block has a leveler on it. So, um, but it's very cool there. Of course, he sent us the pinner for the chassis. Uh, sent us a T-Jet axle pusher for putting in your axles and everything. This this little one here goes to the other one that's, on, that's in here. Um, sent us a sanding block, which comes in real handy for sanding your pickup shoes. Getting them all nice and smooth and flat and contoured. A um, couple other things he sent. These will be uh, giveaway stuff for the Christmas race. He sent an HO, uh, uh, HO tire puller, which I already have one from RTHO. So he sent that. So that's going to be a prize there. Uh, sent us in a axle blank from WizJet, from Wizard. Uh, what else? Uh, we got a this little baby right here, which is a gauge for... Uh, making sure you're legal. Let me get it out here. This slides in in a empty chassis when you got your motor magnets, because there's a there is a um, rule in Fray where your magnets cannot be so close to the armature, and that's what this is for, is to um, make sure that is legal and everything. This also came from RTHO. You can or not RTHO, but Scale Engineering. You can find it there. Um, uh, Chain Drive lives like five minutes from this guy. So he's good friends with him. He knows him pretty well. So we got all of this. He picked up all of this stuff. He also sent some uh, wheel and tire slip-ons, uh, hubs and tires, and some motor magnets that were uh, that are Black Dragons. A um, couple other things. He also sent some gears, which I already have. Hey, Jason from Bakersfield. Um, we got some gauges here for putting on your um, armature. This long, thin one here is to make sure you slide it in. You put your, your spacer on your armature, your armature, then you slide this in on the bottom, this thin one on the bottom of the gear plate. And then you put your gear on top, and then you use your press, and you press it down. And this is to keep your armature from getting too tight on your motor plate. So I, that comes in real handy. That's really hard to do sometimes to get that just right, because... When you start doing your press, if you start using, if you use one of RTHO's presses or something, it gets really, really tight, and then you turn it, and all of a sudden it gets really loose, because that's, the gear starts moving, and sometimes it's really hard to judge how far to go with that before the motor gets, you want the motor so it's not rocking back and forth, but you don't want to go so far that it gets so tight that it won't spin on the gear plate, and that's what that spacer is for. This other bigger one right here is to slide in, um... Under your gear plate, under your, um, if you're using like an RTHO uh, gear pull press pusher downer to, to pop off your top gears and stuff on your armature plates. That's what this one's for. This is to keep your armature plate from bending and warping when you're taking off your, taking armatures off a motor plate. So, want to thank, uh, want to thank Chain Drive for sending all that stuff to us. Something that everybody in the group can use and, and, uh. Uh, pass around and build use for builds and whatnot and everything so we can uh, all go back to the fray maybe a little faster and a little more uh, competitive kind of thing 
So I hope you guys' seasons are going well so far. Actually, I'm hoping you're getting to race, to tell you the truth, with the the whole the restrictions and all of that stuff going on. I hope everybody's getting a chance to race. We are under, of course, we live in the state of Washington. We're uh, East, West Coast Democratic state, at least on the West side anyway, so they dictate everything. So we are under a... Uh, Stay at home order once again, but we're still racing tomorrow. So we've all been together for the last couple of weeks. I don't think there's going to be any issue, and it's not really. There's a lot of places that aren't heating it, and then they're staying open. So we're going to be racing tomorrow. Hey, Mark, how you doing? So we are racing tomorrow, and we are racing in two weeks. <coughs> Uh, that race will be at Stan's house, and then we'll be, like I said, we'll be taking a break from the Point Series and from the YouTube channel for a while. Uh, the next race is the 9th of January, I believe is the date, and that'll be here back on my track again. So, uh, today, tomorrow's race, uh, if you guys haven't been following, it'll be Stock T-Jet and Original Aurora G Plus full body at Mark's house with the promoter's choice. Not quite sure what he's running. And then at Stan's house, we'll be back with Frey cars and HP7s, which I need some HP7 chassis. My car sucks. Daddy Ray, Daddy Joe Racing, here, Blake, but here. <laughs> at least you're here. That's all that matters. So, still haven't bought any new cars off of eBay lately. Um, not. I'm still kind of shopping around, hoping to get some more... Um, cash together to be able to buy some things. I want to do some more reviews. Um, there's some more uh, in-package stuff I'd like to get a hold of to open and, and show for you guys. Um, there was an, I was watching an HP7 in the package the other day, but it kind of went out of my price range a little bit. So I kind of kind of uh, lost out on that one. Now, there is still a couple listed on eBay. That I'm watching, that are buy it now, that are still listed. I think there's an HP7 there. Uh, there's a Tyco U-turn car there that I wouldn't mind having. So uh, show you guys. If you guys don't know what that is, the U-turn cars will go both directions on your track. You can spin it around and go the other way, and spin it around and go the other way. So they're they're kind of fun. We've had some drivers' challenges with them. Uh, they make for some really fun, exciting, and very very funny racing. So if you time it just right. And you can you got a straightaway where your timing system is. If you time it just right, you can just flip it and just go back and forth, <laughs> and it gets hilarious. We've, a couple of people have tried it. You just got to time it just right, depending on whether you're on a clip together track or a routed track, because you know routed tracks lane spacing is a little wider than clip together. But uh, it gets pretty funny. I also would like to. Uh, there's been some some comments about doing uh, slotless stuff, which I would like to get into. Um, I don't own or never never did own any slotless stuff as a kid. Um, I know Stan's got an Ultra Five set uh, in the box that's not sealed. What type of chassis do you run of the magnet class? Our magnet class, you can run anything that is a uh, magnet car. So you can run um, a, a turbo, which not too many people do. You can run an SRT turbo, which uh, I'm running. Finally made a slot car layout. Have a set on the floor all anymore. Cool. Um which I run a SRT. Stan run. Stan was running an SRT. Has finally quit. Um, so SRTs. You can run a Super G. You can run a Mega G, or you can run a Mega G Plus. You can run a Lifelike, either a T or an M chassis, and you can run a Tyco HP or a Tyco 440X2. Uh, they have to be stock out of the package. You may change the rear tires and wheels. Uh, you can run a lower rear tire and wheel, or you can run silicone over foams. It's your choice, but it has to be on the stock axle with the stock with the stock gear. So that's our magnet class. Uh, most everybody are running SRTs or Super Gs or Mega Gs. So just to give you guys a, a hint about what we're running, the uh, John is still messing around with the lifelike car, and I don't know why. Um, it, it doesn't really keep up and it doesn't handle as good as an SRT. Right now, the SRTs <coughs> are pretty much king in that class. Um, 
out of the last race, if you guys saw the last race with the four, um, the three cars that were first, second, and third, which were all GT40s, mine was an SRT, Elijah was an SRTs, and Stan's was a Mega G. So, they seem to be the best gripping and the best handling car in that class. Um, the Mega G Plus, uh, they don't make uh, the, they only make the long chassis in the Mega G Plus, so you can only run like the Audi and the, the, uh, the Audi, the, the Audi, the, the Peugeot and the, uh, Porsche and the Toyota, which nobody has yet because those are still set cars. But that's what we run in the Magnet class. Um, I'm, I'm thinking on doing a video for you guys on, um, going over our rules and what we run. Uh, via the point series anyways um, we have all kinds of cars this group is when this group first founded uh, Don jump kind of put us all together uh, back in the early 2000s we all kind of met through different means and, and different ways and we've always raced everything from stock T jets all the way up through today's modern day um, cars back then it was was uh, the magnet cars where we'd ran them all separate. So they, you know, we ran Tyco 44 X2s, we ran Tomy Turbos, we ran Tomy SRTs when they came out, and um, all of that kind of stuff. We still have all those cars. Um, we run everything from stock T jets to freight cars to Magna Tractions to non mag to G plus to um, Tyco HP HP twos HP sevens Tyco Pros Tyco 440s Tyco 44 X2s. So everybody has at least one chassis of everything. We run the Magna Traction trucks from time to time and uh, just keep everything together. Where are some Mega G slow right out of the box and some are fast? I got a funny feeling that has to do with your, your wearing in, in uh, your motor brushes. Some may have been tested a little longer. We want to kind of try to get into I am I have a brass chassis that I want to get part that we're slowly accumulating parts for that we want to do a build of. But um, not everybody in the group uh, has ventured out that far when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, I have a chassis that we're gonna that we wanna that we wanna do a build of that was in a um, that was in that set of stuff that we wanna build do a build of. Um, I've got the pickups for it. Um, I got front axle for it. I got the only thing we're looking for now. Um, is the, there's another plate that comes across the base here, uh, that holds the body that you, for pinning the body. I don't have one of those. I'm still looking for that. Hey, Brad from Michigan. How's the three by five coming in? We're going to make some changes to the three by five build just to bring up that topic. Um, we need to build another set of legs for the other side because it's not going to be hooked up to the big layout anymore because I've got enough room for it to stand alone. Why do some body shells cause so much more noise? I, I, I think that, has, but I'll get to that in a second. I'll talk about the 3 by 5 build. Um, we're going to be putting some new legs on it so it stands all by itself. We're going to redo the wall that goes around the outside, and I might have to buy some new... Um, when uh, wall trim, we used plastic wall trim to do the to do the wall around the outside. But we got to messing with it at the old house, and the outside lane has an advantage in the corners because the the wall's right up against the racetrack. So depending on your body length, you can just set the body against the outside wall and just rip around the corner. So I wanna I wanna build an outside on on just on the corners, anyways. I wanna build an outside lip, maybe maybe about that much. On the outside of the racetrack, so it gives an advantage to where you don't, you can't lay your rear end against the outside wall and go around the racetrack. So we're probably going to be making that change here soon. I want to get back to the three by five build. I know we haven't done a lot on it lately. Um, we're we're down to to basically scenery and whatnot, but I, I want to uh, get back to that as well uh, and get back to uh, we'll. Probably the first video we're going to do, we'll be doing the outs redoing the outside wall and making those basically an apron on the outside of the corner. So it doesn't give the outside lane as much an advantage as it was. So it'll make it a little harder to drive. But back to the question about bodies and why some are louder than others. <clears throat> There's a lot of things that can vary in that. The tightness of the body on the chassis, for one. Um, if it rocks back and forth a lot, you get a lot of noise. 
Also, um, if it's got a big ceiling, if it's got a tall roof, like uh, sells Chaparral 7 sells running brass cars on eBay for around 125 Okay, we'll have to look that up. Um, it also depends on your, your roof height and how much cavity you have inside the body to how much sound you get out of that car. Um, these, these uh, the Fords and stuff on the, the uh, cheap, uh, Mega G Plus cars um, are really tall, and you kind of get a lot of, you get a lot of reverberation from the armature inside the, inside the car. That'll also cause a lot of noise as well. Just got set up and running, Brad Track, six lane, seven custom, seven inch custom, seven inch custom, custom bank curve. Brad's got, Brad's got some really cool racetrack setups. Um, Stan's track is a Brad's track, um. Got a big waiting list, 70 foot. That's a good size racetrack, Roger. I wouldn't mind having one. I just don't have the cash to... Uh, Elijah's been, been wanting to do our layout in a routed track. Same layout as we have, just routed. We'd have to make the base slightly wider. What size did you use the curves on the The outsides are 12s. Outsides are 12s, the insides are 9s on the 3x5 build. And they're not banked. They're, they're uh, flat, 12, flat 12 corner, flat 9 inside corner. We banked it with the uh, with the, the door shims and whatnot. It wasn't a banked corner. Because the banked corners should be too, too steep. I didn't want a steep. I wanted a, a local oval kind of style racetrack with slight bank, not huge bank. So they are they are a twelve inch flat corner with a nine inch inside corner, and fifteen inch two two fifteen inch straightaways. Two, hold on a second. Yeah. Or at least the outside of the racetrack are fifteen inch straightaways. So. We'll, uh, it's, uh, we'll take for, go for a little walk here for a second. We'll take a look at it. It's propped up right now. It's going to go like right here in this big open space that we have here in the basement. So it'll be, it'll fit right here. And it's, we've got two 15 inch straightaways with the nine inch inside corner and the 12 inch outside corner. So. We still got to paint the infield. Like I was saying, if you guys look up here, hopefully the sun, well, here, let's go down here. It'll be easier. If you guys can see the, the walls right up against the racetrack, so whoever's in this lane, they can just lay their car on the outside wall and just rip around the corner. So I want to put a little bit of an apron there on the outside to eliminate the advantage of the outside lane. So they you actually have to drive the corner rather than, um, rather than, just laying it on the wall and ripping it. Hello, Kurt, from a lot of Michigan people out there today. Wait, yeah, 13 months. Yeah, it takes a while to get, get something from Brad. He's got a pretty good waiting list. What's email address? I'll send you a picture. It, it's S-N-T-O-Z-M-A-N at gmail.com is my email address if you guys want to send any emails or correspondence or anything. <clears throat> so, but yeah, that's, we'll get the, get back to that here soon. Hoping to uh, be, a, I really want to get that brass chassis going. I promise you guys, we will be getting back to the, uh, to the, to the Super 2 build too. I know we've been away from that for a while as well. Um, we need to get back to doing that. Yeah, I'm seeing your guys' I can't text within the chat though, I don't think. I've never tried that. I never I don't think I can. No, I can't. I can't I can't text within the chat.
But, uh, what else? What else? Oh, the three, yeah, the Super 2 build. We need to get back to that. We need to get... I want to do that Frey build for you guys. I want to do that Brass Pan build for you guys. Just need the parts for that. The Super 2, I got to do some tinkering um, with it to get it to get it running back up to where it was. And uh, there's some other things I'd like to buy for that car as well, just for shits and giggles kind of thing. Um, I, we do have a set of zapped magnets uh, that'll fit in a... It'll fit in... I can't remember if those are magnet tractions or non-magnets. -mag might have to look into that. Um, if I got some of those, we might be able to mess around with and, and do some kind of cool stuff. Maybe hop it up a little bit. Make a uh, make kind of maybe a modern day Super 2 kind of car as well. So I want to do kind of a stock car. I do have a second chassis that we might might uh, do something with um, to do like kind of a Super 2 Super build. Maybe with modern modern parts and pieces and see what we can come up with. And maybe put them up against one each other, one another. Hey, John from New York. Put put the two Super 2s up against one another. One from back in the day on foams and one today on maybe silicone over foams and see what they uh, see what they do. It'd be kind of a neat build, be neat uh, comparison to do. And then we could also like put the Super 2 up against the Brass Pan build and all that kind of stuff. The Brass Pan build, I think we're going to go... I have a old... Um, uh, SRT motor that we can use. Um, I don't know what else I've got. I'd have to look around. I know I've got a couple. I might have a HP2 uh, motor we can use and whatnot for that chassis too. But it's prob we're probably going to be using the uh, tur the motor out of the Tomei Turbo. Between an SRT and a tur is Hold on. The difference between an SRT and a turbo chassis isn't it just the magnets? Yeah. They have uh, they have stronger traction magnets between the SRT and the regular turbo. The turbos are uh, um, the SRTs are silver. I think they're a little more potent. And then the uh, my the turbo the regular Tomei car is a bar magnet that's all one piece. So there's your difference between. There's your difference between the... Uh, do I have them both on camera? There we go. Between the SRT and the regular Tomei Turbo. I do believe they are the same outside of that. I believe the gearing is the same. I think the, the can motors are the same. It's just the traction magnets. And then if you put a lower set of tires on them, like we're running... These are... Um, I can't remember the exact size, but these are SRTs. Or not SRTs, but BSRT uh, hubs with BSRT tires that I got from HOSlotCarRacing.com, which I'm not sure what happened. If anybody out there knows what happened to all of his stuff after he passed away, uh, comment and find out who bought all that stuff. I know he had quite a bit of stuff, or if somebody took over the website or whatnot. I know it's still listed. zapped magnets or magnet traction i thought they are so they're going to be too tall but i uh, will we'll see what we can find magnet wise that are uh modern day equivalents to super twos or some some polymers maybe that'll fit inside of a non-mag chassis mess around with it a little bit have some fun maybe do do a second build with uh silicone over foams will be kind of cool to do um, let me know, too, what you guys uh, want to see video-wise. Um, I do have ideas. Um, I am uh, kind of uh, a little short for... I'm looking forward to a break, tell you the truth. Um, it's been hectic at work with this time of year, working in the grocery business and Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that kind of stuff. And some of the hours we're working and, and I'm, we're short on our crew and stuff. So I've been kind of tired lately and it's been hard to do videos and whatnot. Um, I'm promise you guys there'll be some cool stuff coming um looking forward to the break and taking some time off from the youtube channel and and just enjoying it and having fun uh doing our christmas race which will be coming up which will be kind of fun i know i never uh do a video on those because it's just for fun and and just have some fun with my friends and stuff and whatnot but um 
when we do the new videos too for the racing, let me know what you guys think on that as well. When we get it up and running and we get the other GoPro here and, and I can start doing some stuff and let me know what you guys think. I know some people are like the blimp view, but also some people want to be down on the racetrack and other people want to be able to see the, uh, the screen as well. So we'll try and incorporate all that when we get all three GoPros. But, uh, but back to the thing, I mean, let me know what you guys want to see build wise or tune wise or, or, or whatnot, all of that kind of stuff. I, I sometimes I need ideas and whatnot. I know we haven't done a body paint in a while. I'd like to do one of those. I do have, uh, three yellow and blue magnets in the build. You may be able to use super two yellow and blues. I have some, I have super twos done. I do have super two magnets. I bought some off of eBay. I have two sets. Actually, I actually have three sets total. One set I think I got from you actually way back when. And then I bought two more from um, Super Dave off of eBay. I know we do need to do some more Tyco stuff. Um, we did a 44X2 tune up and whatnot, but <clears throat> we do need to do some, uh, some uh, more. Uh, Tyco kind of oriented stuff, maybe with the, the Tyco Pros, the Super 2, or not the Super 2, but the HP 2s, and all that kind of stuff. I'm still, I almost, I almost have every, um, I am still need to think uh, there's at least one more, I think. Um, there's like four, three or four different HP 2 chassis. Now, everybody seems to think that HP 2 and Curve, Hug Curve Hugger are two different things, and they're not. A uh, Curve Hugger is a... A variant of the HP2, just to give you guys that that out there. Um, I have, um, where did my Jeep go? This is the last iteration of the HP2 that has the traction magnets in it. This is classified as an HP2. It, it was an it said it on the package. It's got the same shoes and whatnot. Uh, then there is there's a the black chassis which just has a single bar magnet in it. Hey, Super Dave, what's going on? Everything's well with me. Just mentioned you in the, the chat there. Check him out on eBay. He's got some cool listings. Um, there's also a double bar. Ah, come on, drawer. Where is he at? This one right here that has the double... This one is what everybody thinks of when you hear a curve hugger. You can see the the two bar right there rather than the single. What these are metal, and what they're actually doing is they're actually bringing the, the magnet uh, force from the armature and motor down to the chassis to try and get, uh, get grip on the rail is what that's for. And then they finally went to a actually rear traction magnet in the very last iteration of the HP2. This is the one we did the review of a while back. So, and I got HP2s is kind of where my uh, my slot car uh, journey started back as a kid. Got two HP2 sets for Christmas about 78, 79 maybe. For one from my mom and dad and one from my grandparents, I believe. So I got two sets. So I got like four cars and everything. And then I just kind of, Kind of ventured from there. Um, bought my first Magna Traction car in probably 81. Uh, bought my first G Plus car 83-ish. Something like that. Shut the door so you guys don't hear upstairs. And then uh, kind of after we moved out of the my, our house that we we're living in at the time i i did i lost my the place to be able to have my slot tracks i had it on a board i actually had a two-sided board that my dad did for me i had a, a the slot track on one side and train set on the other side and when we moved we moved from a, a three-bedroom full basement house into a, a three-bedroom trailer double wide trailer and I, I lost my space for my slot track and i kind of drifted away uh, from slot cars through the latter part of junior high and actually through high school, the first part of high school, college and all that kind of stuff. And I got just got back into slot cars uh, in the early 2000s and just got 
full bore back into it after that. So that's my story when it comes to slot cars. And then I uh, discovered T-Jets when I got found the, the group and all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> that's where my journey started from when it comes to slot cars. Um, I'm not a huge... I know people have asked and everything. I'm not a huge collector of shelf queens, as it were. Um, I'm more involved in the racing and the building and um, that side of the, the hobby. I do have some cars that are collections, that are collectors. I got some up here on the shelf above me here that are a couple given to me by subscribers and, and cars that I've bought off of eBay and whatnot. But when it comes right down to it, I will race them if I have to. Hello from Canada. Robert, how you doing? How's the how's the slot car world up there in Canada? Let's uh get some uh views from outside the United States. I know uh I, I talk to uh, several people out of Australia every now and again and they're having they have issues with getting stuff dismal. <laughs> It's, it's a hard, where, what part of Canada are you at? Thunderjet, figure eight. Cool, Rodney. Are you on uh, eastern Canada or are you in western Canada? Near Toronto, so eastern Canada. French Canadians. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, do you, you guys have trouble getting parts and pieces up there? I know it's probably kind of hard ordering from the States and then having to switch carriers and whatnot over the border. <clears throat> I know that's probably Australia's problem. Australia has a lot of, uh, they get a lot of, they get the Tomei stuff, but outside of that, they don't have a lot of, of uh, getting of uh, older stuff. Outside of eBay, anyways. Yeah, expensive. Yeah, it's... Probably the, the exchange rate doesn't help either. I know it helped going the other way, but it doesn't... If I remember right, it doesn't help going from Canadian to American. So, oh, I was meant, talking about paint jobs... Doing uh, body paints, we do have... Oh, they're down here. I do have a couple of fray cars that we need to uh, paint. We might have to do a paint uh, a paint thing here pretty soon. I've got three of Hurley's Hurricane Motorsports bodies. Not so many hobby shops around now. Yeah, that they're depleting around here too. We, we had one for the longest time and then they went out of business. The only thing I have here is Hobby Lobby. And of course, all you can get there is Auto World. So it's a, uh, that is a, uh, a dying breed when it comes to hobby shops, which is a sad thing. That's where a lot of people could used to be able to meet when in this hobby and, and stuff to be able to find people within your area that share your same hobby. You met them at the hobby store. Now it's, it's harder to meet local people unless you know somebody who knows somebody to bring them in. It just gets kind of, kind of hard. Uh, so we've got one of his uh, Eurico. I how you pronounce it? Never mess with an Ultra Five cars. Ever not not yet. Um, I need to. I'd like to like to do some non-slot stuff. We were just talking about that a little while ago. Um, I know Stan, a uh, close friend of mine who we who we've raced at and races with the group, has an Ultra Five set that works. That's not sealed. That we may have to borrow. Um, just to mess around with and have fun with and show you guys, uh, maybe do a review of it kind of thing. Put it on the floor and just have some fun. Um, I've been looking at sets on eBay when it comes to slotless stuff. And it's not bad price-wise, but then when you throw in shipping, it actually doubles the price. So um, I might have to look around. I know the Ultra 5 set that Stan has was actually found here in town at an antique store. I can fix you up with some, some cars if you're interested. Well, I'll have, I'll have to hit you up one of these times, Robert. I don't have any track to, to do anything with them on, but we might have to uh, might have to venture out and pick some up and, and do some stuff with them one of these days down the road. 
Uh, back, so, like I was saying, I got three of Hurley's bodies. I got an NSX, a GT40, and his latest uh, Lambo that we can do a paint job of. Uh, I want to do these for the next fray race uh, at the fray. So, we might have to do a paint job here soon as it, when it comes to videos and whatnot. Haven't done one in a while. I don't think we've done one since we did the last fray body I did. That might be something we can do on the channel here soon. Um, if there's any other cars, too, that you guys um, mess around with that we don't uh, do around here, let me know. Conversations for slotted tracks. You make good conversions for... Yeah, I, uh, Elijah has uh, um, oh, a speed steer chassis. Richard Petty Superbird Body 43 for sale. <laughs> Where are you getting your Magna Traction Crown gears? I was getting them from uh, HOSlotCarRacing.com, but since he went out, um, I'm not sure. I think Slot Car Central has had some good listings lately uh, for Magna Traction parts. Let's, let's check them out, by the way, here. We'll check out, see what he's got listed here. Check him out and see what he's got listed here. Here is my Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. No luck on finding anyone into a slot car racing. And even in South Carolina, you would think Jag Hobbies. Jag Hobbies? Do they have a lot of... I haven't tried Jag. That's a, That might be another good one to, to look into. Um, let's go chassis, parts. Um, AFX. Let's see what we can come up here with. Oh, ooh, he's got motor brushes for both, for AFX and Magna Traction. Lights, guide pins, chassis, G Plus, motor brushes. Yeah, he doesn't have any pin, any gears listed. Motor plate. He's got an idler gear, but that's about it. So, um, so somebody said Jag Hobbies? Let's try Jag. Uh, let's go home. Get your slot cars. Let's go. AFX. Bodies. Parts. There we go. Oh, yeah, he's got crown gears. He's currently out of stock, though. Say so can make good conversation. Meant to say make good conversation, not hard. <laughs> not my area. Yep, Jags. Jag hobbies. Yeah, he's got them listed here, but he says he's out of stock. They're $1.50. So, keep an eye on... Um, Oh, that's the cluster gear. That's the top gear. Okay. Yeah, keep an eye on Jag Hobbies in his AF, uh, AFX parts listing. And um, and uh, keep a listing there. Keep an eye out there. He, he has them listed, but he's currently listed as out of stock. Though he does have an idler. He does have one for a... 
specialty chassis, which I do believe are fairly close. Um, somebody correct correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I do believe the 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 crown gear between the the uh, specialty chassis and the the regular chassis are the same. So he does have them listed under the specialty chassis for parts too. So um, he's got speed steer parts. He's got specialty chassis parts. He's got magnet traction parts. G plus. So and he's got some chassis listed as well. But so it is. It is kind of hard. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened to all of uh, our uh, HO slotcarracing.com stuff. That's where my go to when it came to older stuff. No one can. No one I called has any. I can call a lot of shops. No wonder why, huh? Probably because they're getting harder and harder to find. They're uh, st some of the older stuff with uh, people starting to 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 um, die. Uh, I sad to say, die off, and um, who were in the hobby or who had parts and pieces and stuff. It's getting harder and harder to find uh, older parts. If uh, some people don't step up and uh, uh, replace them in any way, it's going to be harder and harder to find. Um, another place you might try is um, uh, Viper, right off the top of my head. He is doing a lot of stuff for Magna Traction cars. I don't know. I know he's got, like, shoes and springs and whatnot, but I don't know about outside of, of that. Try him, too, and carries parts now. And set. All right. All right. Dan, what are we what are we talking about here? Check wizard. Check under wizards. Wizard might be another good spot too. Yep. Um, I know he does a lot of TJ stuff. Go up. <laughs> Go up. Okay. Greetings. Hey Dan, what's going on? So yeah, he might be a good reference as well. Um, he's picking up, he's picking up the, uh, mantle as it were for, for stuff like that. So, so's Jag, I've noticed, or, uh, w uh, Viper as well. Um, well, uh, hopefully he'll, uh, delve in deeper parts wise as well. So we can have some more options for older stuff when it comes to that outside of buying junk lots on eBay anyways. Um, some of those can be kind of iffy at times as well. Other than some of them, you can you can actually get some really cool stuff if you can get them at a decent if you can get them at a decent price. Oh. Oh. Lost the cap to my Gatorade. So there are a couple options there for parts for you guys. Um, I know uh, most of them we have most listed on SlotCarCrazy.com as well. You can get there from there too. Just got to throw that pitch in there. Jim's doing a great job over there, even though I haven't been able to get a hold of him in a week. So, some other things there to, to look into outside of eBay. eBay can get kind of, especially now with the, the pandemic and everybody staying at home. And, and I know uh, we made some comments, um, Stan's made some comments too, about some of the live auctions on Facebook have been outrageous as well. <clears throat> people paying some crazy money for some not so uh uh uncommon or not so or yeah not so uncommon stuff i mean a lot of common stuff have been going quite big lately too which is kind of crazy stuff that you could get really cheap on ebay or kind of going kind of crazy on the facebook auctions or even the, even on ebay too it is. It is sad to say that some, in in some ways, it is kind of a uh, slot cars are becoming a dying art. But hopefully, we can keep it keep it up and keep it going. If we can raise some new new followers and new friends and and make some new people and introduce them to a hobby that has uh, been around since the '60s and is still still vibrant and still has a lot of followers, it's just that we need to we need to drop the age a little younger. <laughs> I'm glad to, glad that Elijah got involved and and that he's as in deep as he is and and whatnot. That's the only way we're going to be able to keep the hobby going is introducing some more some younger people into the hobby who are can fall in love and and have some fun. 
That's why I try and limit both of their game times on the gaming systems. So uh, uh, what do you, um, what do we got going here? Hi, love the channel. Thanks, James. Words were never spoken. Yeah, we gotta, you, you can't, you can't, uh, you, you can't keep a hobby going without bringing some new people into it. And, uh, we need, we need some younger, and we need, um, like I saw a post on Facebook a few days ago, which is, is so true, um, about noobs and older people. Pro Tracker is really stressing the HO and 30 second scale racing. He actually demos with two tracks for each scale. Please check him out and support him. So that's Pro Tracker. Is that on YouTube, Dan? Pro Tinker, tr tink, Tinker, Pro Tinkerer. Excuse me, Pro Tinkerer. Is that on? Is that on uh, YouTube? Hopefully we can get, yeah, okay, so yeah, check him out. Hopefully we can get, uh, I know he hasn't done a video in quite some time, and I know he's, his health and, and stuff is finally getting better, and his life's finally getting better, but we need to get, um, <clears throat> I'm drawing a blank. We need to get our other boy back involved in, in slot cars and doing some videos. So that's also, that's one of the main reasons why I started this channel too was to get keep my interest and the and the, to to up the interest of uh to uh, bring some new stuff and new people into the hobby. Met a lot of people that way, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, uh, 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 vitamin fifty. There we go. Now it dawned on me. I've talked to him off and on a little bit. He said he's he's going to be doing some stuff here soon, and he just hasn't got around to doing it yet. So hopefully we can. I'm not in competition with anybody here. I, I just want to promote the hobby and bring some new people into it. And the more that do it on YouTube, the merrier because it it uh it uh helps promote the hobby. Friday Friday's coming up, so he may have some deals. Oh, okay. On the we're talking still debating on the whole okay. Brian Young is his name, Pro Tinkerer. I might have to check him out too. I I haven't checked I haven't seen any of his videos, so I might have to check that out too. I have been watching, uh, that, no, that's somebody different, okay. I've been watching some 30-second scale stuff, too, lately, to uh, kind of, just bought an international set, track is awesome, but three cars don't work, anybody else have this happen. Is it a sealed set, Kevin? Good day, Greg. Was that a sealed set, Kevin, or was it already an open set? Because I haven't heard too many problems with uh, with uh, AFX or, or T uh, Tomei stuff when it gets out of the box. I've heard some issues with Auto World stuff. <coughs> it could just be an issue with the cars that are... Because um, those are, are Super Gs. It could be a, a, a pickup shoe issue or something with those cars. You might have to tinker with them a little bit. Uh, so what I was going to say before we, we jumped in with a question there, what, what is everybody racing? If you guys do race on a regular basis, what does everybody race in their groups out there? Kind of get a, 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 a gist of where everybody's at and what you guys race on a regular basis. Because you guys know what we run, so what does everybody else run? I know there's a lot of, uh, a lot of Frey guys out there, or variations of the Frey car. I know there's a lot of uh, Viper and Wizard um, polymer magnet super fast car guys out there that run these on a regular basis as well. How you guys see those cars is beyond me. I've watched some of those polymer magnet races. It sounds more like you race by the sound of the car than you do <clears throat> than you do um, than you do by just watching it because they're so freaking fast. Ah, my butt's starting to hurt. Ugh. Okay, so I've been on for like an hour, and I gotta go to the restroom, so I'll be... You guys stay right there, and I'll be right back.
I'm back. Uh-oh. Car fell. Next special order by Pro Tinkerer will be Black 55 Bel Air Yellow Flames. Nobody to race with, but I like running life like an AFX. That's cool, Kevin. January, I think he, he opens his store Saturday. So let's uh let's <clears throat> got the got the tablet out. Let's go. Let's go check this channel out real quick. I need a new tablet. This thing's getting old as hell. I've had this thing since, geez, like 2004, something like, maybe even 2006. Need to get a new one. Magnet Tractions are my favorite. Magnet Tractions are fun cars. Just received my three new Trans Am cars today from Tinkerer Pro Toys. They're sweet. I'll have to check him out. I have to watch some of these videos. Contact AFX. They'll send you a replacement chassis. Oh, yeah, on the, the international set. Yeah, they're very good about that. If you guys have stuff from them that doesn't work very well, contact them and, and um, he'll be able to, they'll be able to replace them. Auto World's also very good about that, even though their stuff's not, you know, up to snuff. I'll also take Kevin. Also take those cars and start tinkering with them a little bit. It could be it could be a broken um, it could be a broken motor brush. Um, it could be it could be a bad motor brush. It could be anything. It could, if you maybe replace the bell end on it or something. Um, it could also be um, the tabs on the front of the bell end may be pushed in too far and they're not making contact with the little hoop thing that the pickup shoe connects to. If it's not making contact there, it might not. It, that might be an issue as well. Those little tabs on the front of the bell end might uh, have a tendency to be pushed back too far. So if you pull them, if you take the car apart and you pull them forward a little bit, and then put the motor, put the motor and everything back in the chassis, it might work that way too. <clears throat> that might be something we might have to uh, take a look at. I don't think we've ever taken a a Super G apart here on the channel. I've, I've showed you guys how to make bell end tools and whatnot, but we, I don't think we've ever fully took one completely apart. Well, we did when we, well, actually we did when we did the boot, when we did the, uh, where is that car? I'm missing a car. Where the hell's our, our, where the heck's the diecast car build? Where'd that car go? I'm missing a car. Where'd I put it? Oh, it's over here. Actually, we did when we did this car. We uh, did a complete build on this car. When we did the the chassis for this car, we did a build on it. So, yeah, we we didn't. Uh, I think we did. We put it all together then. That's been a while ago. This thing we did this build a long time ago on the channel. This is like one of the first builds we ever did on the YouTube channel. I think. Um, there is a few other cars. Um, if you guys are willing or wanting to do um, uh, uh, a diecast build, um, hold on for a sec. The uh, 
Hot Wheels uh, McLaren GTR uh, fits a long wheelbase. Um, fits a long wheelbase. Uh, Mega G chassis. I can get them lined up here. Whoop. So, yeah, Elijah was looking at this. He was looking at, we were thinking about running a diecast body class, and the, the uh, McLaren fits the, the, the long Mega G chassis. Mega, or, um, yeah, Mega G chassis. So there's an idea for you guys. Of course, this is on a Super G. This is the Ford Falcon from Hot Wheels. Um, it fits on there. Um, well, Elijah was looking at another one I can't think of right off the top of my head. Um, that he was looking at... Oh, uh, where did he go? I think it was this car. Yeah, it was this one right here. The, the, the Ford GT. Um, I think also fits is the same wheelbase as the long Mega G chassis too. So there's another one. It is kind of low, and you got to kind of do something for the wing on the back. <coughs> so that might be an interesting. And um, on the the McLaren, if you guys use the metal wing body, you don't have to worry about gluing the plastic wing version to the car. So you can use the metal wing body version for a tight for a uh, diecast build on a slot car chassis. But he was looking at doing a Mega G. But uh, if you guys want to do one for do your V8 Australian style car, you can use a uh, the Ford Falcon chassis or Ford Falcon body from Hot Wheels. Might be another one we might have to do or down the road is do another one of these on a different chassis. Um, something I also want to do is um, want to fit one of these, one of the Auto World stock cars, to a. Uh, they fit the that fits the long Mega G and Mega G Plus chassis, so we might have to do a, a do a crossover build there too. And all it takes is a motor clip. I, I figured out how to, if you take the motor clip off and you can break it and glue it to the side of the chassis, to the side of the chassis, it, it'll work. So, kind of some ideas there too for a video coming up. We need to, I think we need to do some more comparison videos too. Compare some, some cars here and there. I'd like to get a Viper chassis. And maybe a current wiz, uh, wizard chassis. Um, his new, uh, uh, what's that? His newest chassis. I can't remember what it's called. Right off the top of my head, from Wizard, would be kind of a cool, uh, a cool uh, comparison to do as well on the on the channel. Uh, some other things I might want to talk about too. If we can, I might round up some controllers and whatnot. We might have to do another. Do another controller video, comparison video between controllers and what controllers you want to use for what cars and all that kind of stuff. Where to go to get controllers and everything. Elijah has a really nice new DeFalco that I bought him that we might have to take a look at uh, for you guys to do some comparisons with. Um, this is my magnet car controller. This has got a 25 ohm resistor on it with a heat sink on top. This is what I use for my magnet cars. Um, the the, the freaking trigger on this thing is still pretty stiff. It wears my finger out <laughs> racing with this thing. I'm still working in the spring on it, but it, it I got a lot of control with that. And then, of course, we have my, this is my controller that I use for um, everything from T-Jets up through my G-Plus cars. It's got a sensitivity dial on the backside for uh, doing your, your uh, for your sensitivity on your trigger. For when you pull it, Elijah's has um, he has two dials on his. He has a sensitivity on his, and then he has a brake. He can dial in more or less brake on his controller. So we might have to do a video about that pretty soon. I know Stan has another controller that we might have to borrow to do a video of with to do a whole comparison thing. 
but that might be a kind of a neat video to do. I'd also like to pick up a couple of um, uh, some. I can't remember the name right off the top of my head. I can get you can get them. For, I can get them from One Stop Slot Shop. Um, they come in different colors, different ohms, and whatnot. I might pick up a couple of those too to uh, kind of throw into the mix to give you guys a, a comparison video or whatnot. It's kind of hard, you know. It takes a lot of takes me money to do this, so it might be a little while before we can put all that together. But something down the road to think about. See, what do we got going on in the chat here? Anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Dan. That's another one. And that's kind of what I'm basing my... Very good point, Dan. Um, if you guys, if anybody out there is a Hot Wheels guy or a die cast, check out 3D Bot Maker. He does some insane, really cool race videos. And I'm kind of basing what I want to do on the slot track off of his stuff. So... He's got a really cool layout, a really neat uh, downhill track that he races cars on, races four at a time. Very up close, very, very, um, really cool videos. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get to on the on our side to bring you guys to race action and whatnot. The only thing I can't do is I can't add commentary. I don't have any way to add commentary after the fact, which I think is what he does. <clears throat> he films and then edits and then adds the commentary in after the fact. And I I, um, I, I need to find a way to do that. I'd love to be able to do that with maybe me and Elijah. And we could do like a head-on head from East Tennessee. Welcome. Can you do more on power sources? Okay, yeah, we can do, I can do, with what I have, I can show you on power sources. Um. We, we, that might be a good one to do too, Kev. Um, if you might want to go back and take a look at uh, when we rewired the the track and we did the new uh, base for the the our big layout, you can. We talked a little bit about power sources then and how to install them, um, and whatnot. You can find hey another Tennessean. Um, oh, dude. oh, you two need to talk. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So it's a. Uh, well, we can do that. Um, my power sources is from uh, the one I got from HOSlotCarRacing.com. He actually outsourced it. He was just a uh, just a kind of medium between the manufacturer and the orderer. He, when I ordered it from him, he actually sent it to them, and they actually shipped it straight to me. So um, there's different ways you can go when it comes to power sources. Not from me, not far from me. Yep, everybody's checking in. Illinois. So, uh, yeah. So, it's uh, you can go power packs. You can go individually powered per lane. You can go <clears throat> the commercial power supply, which is what I have. You can buy the su power supplies off of eBay or whatnot, which is basically the same thing as I have going in. We may have to... Um, we may have to do a jump on the track. I am contemplating adding another four feet to the, to the, the, huge, the big layout on the other end of the track and we might have to do some jumpers on the track to uh make the power more equal we are having a little issue um in red lane at one point on the racetrack it's probably only about four or five sections long for some reason the car seems to you don't feel it as much with t-jets and freight cars and magnet traction but when you get up into the non, when you get up into the magnet cars, you kind of feel a little more. The car slows down through that section a little bit. We need to figure out what's going on there, and jumping the track might uh, might solve that issue a little bit. So we may have to do a video on that here one of these days soon, especially if we add the other four feet on the other end. And it'll make it a little harder for videos because the GoPro won't see that far or the way it's currently mounted. I might have uh, the high view anyways. I might have to move the high view to, uh, to apply hacks using adjustable laptop power, laptop power supply. That's interesting. How many amps is your power supply? Uh, it is any, uh, well, here, hold on. Let's, uh, where's my phone at charge? My 45. Okay. So we'll be, we're going to stay on for about 10 more minutes and then I'm going to get off. We're going to be on for about an hour and a half after that. So the, my power supply is a commercial one. Um, it's a 
if you guys can can see it there. It's a uh, Astron. Um, we got any we're, we're from zero to forty on the amps on volts. So we can go from zero to to forty amp, forty amps or forty volts. Excuse me on that, and then we just adjust the amperage um, accordingly according to what cars we're running. Um, if we're running uh, Magna Traction cars, for some reason, we got to up the amps or we have an issue with the amps dropping really hard. And I don't know if it's somebody's car because it was, it was only happening when certain people were on the racetrack. So it's got to be somebody's car that's pulling the amps down. So we got to kind of adjust that a little bit. But we usually run um, at 15, no matter what we run. Um, we set it at 15 amps. Or, yeah, yeah, we run at 15, so that's where we run all, all of our cars run on that same, in that same uh, bolt. We do play with it from occasionally if we're messing around and practice or whatnot, we'll up it or down it or whatever, just to have some fun. But, well, all our race action is ran right there. So, I was talking about the, talking about the adjustable one. So, um, I'm not quite sure um, where to get that particular power supply now. Um, you might be able to... I know they have a website um, that they... Because I looked it up. and um, But they don't have that exact particular one listed. But uh, that might be an interesting... It's A-S-T-R-O-N. Um, I believe it's www.stron.com. If you guys want to look that up for power supplies or whatnot. I know they list quite a few on eBay, and or if you uh, go to Amazon and list power supplies, they list them there too. So, a couple of options for power supplies for you guys if you want to do something that's adjustable <clears throat> and not want to have to run off of uh, power packs. Which, before we got the power supply, that's what we were running on. We were running on four individual power packs per lane. And they were just the stock old. Actually, they were older uh, Aurora AFX power packs. You may need more amps for magnet cars. Turn your amps up higher. I have some power supply and turn mine. Uh, we don't. I don't. We uh, we turned it up during the last race from the from the magnet traction cars, and then we just kind of left it there when we when we ran um, the when we ran uh, the magnet cars. And it seemed, it, the magnet cars didn't seem to have an issue. And I got a funny feeling I had it set at one point and um, I left it there and uh, Elijah either turned it down or somebody turned it down and it, it screwed it up and we had to readjust it again. Because I, I got it to a point where I liked it and it could have been, well, it could have been the move too. And the dial might have gotten moved in the move too and, and, and I didn't get it set back at where, where we had it before. So now it's now it's set, and I, once I have it set, it usually it's usually okay after that. So I know a lot of people have been. I've seen a lot of talk on um, on uh, Facebook groups about timing systems and questions on timing systems. Um, there's a lot out there. Um, there's uh, of course we run. Uh, I run it. Stan runs it, and. Um, uh, Mark's running it. We all run TrackMate. Um, uh, Jim and Kyle are running. V starts with a V. I can't really pronounce it. They're running for and they're running race uh, race coordinator on their computers for timing systems and whatnot. Um, most of us are running infrared um, uh, for for the counting system. Um, Stan, Stan has read, read switches on, he had, had read switches on the Brad track. He has switched now to a dead strip and we haven't ran on it since that got done. So when we run at his house on the fifth, it'll be on a dead strip. Um, Mark's running a dead strip. Tune in late, but part where, where you were going over Tyco cars, big help. I put everything up 99. I've been trying to figure out what I have. I can't. I can't read to have. What? 
I didn't delete it. Wait, deleted by... Wait, I didn't delete anybody. What the hell? No. Eh. Dang it, I must have hit something. Sorry about that, uh... Wood, wood dogs. Sorry about deleting that. Uh, re, re, uh, retype that message if you can. I'm sorry. Somehow my phone deleted it. Gents have to go. Evening. Be safe. Yep. Have a happy Thanksgiving, Dan. Can't believe it's already that time of year. Has a really good video about converting a wireless controller system from larger slot car system. To your HO system. Probably a uh, scale electrics uh, there, Robert. The scale electrics timing system. More than likely. I wish he would do more on his on his channel from time to time. He doesn't do a lot of videos on Hayden, but he when he does, he does some good stuff. <clears throat> So I'm gonna kind of we are we're at hundred we're an hour and twenty seven minutes here. I'm gonna kind of wrap it up. Hope you guys have had a great uh, time chatting. I know I love chatting with you guys from time to time. We're gonna have to do these more. Um, maybe throw one of these in once a month or something to get everybody together. I'd like to do one live with multiple people to have some some chats and stuff. I know uh, Kevin. You can only do it with people who actually have a YouTube channel. So it'd be kind of cool to do this with with me and and Kevin Vitamin Fifty and and maybe John Peckham Slot Car Sixty Four or something and have like a, a week you know from all over the country and put people together and have some chats and stuff on the channel with multiple people and multiple pictures because you can do that on YouTube. I'd like to be able to figure out how to do that and and do that with a bunch of people and just have some fun, but. Hopefully, maybe we can do that down the road and, and, and everything. So, yeah, I want to tell everybody, have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, don't eat too much. And uh, remember to keep that pin in the slot and the wheels on the downside. We'll see you probably Monday or Tuesday, maybe Wednesday with some race action. And uh, maybe the other Girl Pro will show up and you guys will be able to see the new the new coverage and whatnot. If not, we'll be doing it the old way. And we'll be old and uploading it all together. But uh, hopefully, we'll be having some fun. And I'll catch you guys with that, and I'll catch you guys next weekend. I'll think of something, and we'll be on the channel again next weekend with a video. Maybe, um, I don't think we'll have any money for parts yet, but um, we'll do something. I'll figure something out. So have a great week. I'm out. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.